Hey everybody, this is Mike Anderson with Collision Advice. I'm here with my great friend Danny with the DEG. And we're working with SERS to bring you a series of quick tips that will help you to boost your business. So you know, Danny, and you know my company, Collision Advice, we do surveys where we survey shops quarterly about different operations, right? Whether they're doing them or getting reimbursed for them. And one of the questions we ask, Danny, usually in the third quarter survey is, you know, how often are you reimbursed for seatbelt inspections, right? And I got to tell you, um, one of the statistics we see is that like less than 20% of shops are getting reimbursed for that. Now, I'm not here to tell you to talk about the reimbursement. What I'm here to talk about is what's concerning to me is that when we ask people, you know, have you always get paid, most time get paid, sometimes never or never asked. Right. What's scary to me is that 60% of shops said, we've never even asked anybody to pay us for inspecting seatbelts. So that tells me that they're probably not educated about it and it's probably not getting done. So let's talk today about seatbelt inspections. Every single vehicle manufacturer that I've ever looked at on the regards to their OEM repair procedures has an inspection process for how you're supposed to inspect a seatbelt if the vehicle's been into a collision or an accident, right? So I will tell you, some of these seatbelt inspections, number one, will require the use of a scan tool. It means you have to check the pretensioner to see if it's collapsed. Some of the OEMs will have a visual inspection, right? Where it says, look, you need to look for certain things like fraying in the webbing, or maybe there's actual visual inspection where you have to actually take and like yank the seatbelt at a certain degree angle, like a 45 or 90 degree angle to see if it locks and the mechanism works good. And a third test I've seen is, for example, with one of the European manufacturers, it actually stated that it required up to five different test drives at five different speeds and braking conditions to inspect the seatbelts. And some OEMs will have a combination, of all three of those, right? Where you have to do a scan, a visual inspection, and a test drive. So ladies and gentlemen, here's the deal. I'm not getting caught up in whether you're you know, billing for a third party payer or getting reimbursed for that or not. What I'm concerned about is, are you doing it? Are you inspecting the seatbelts after the vehicle's been in collision? And are we asking the, the you know, vehicle owner, hey, who in the, in the vehicle is wearing a seatbelt? And some OEMs say, you need to inspect all of the seatbelts even if nobody was wearing the seatbelt. Right. And last but not least, before I get Danny's insights, is also child safety seat latches, right? Many of you have probably seen that little like chrome you know, triangle piece that's up on the package tray sh shelf area where child safety seats, um, you know, you hook them to. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know a lot of the OEM states, those are one-time use parts if they were actually in, being used during the accident. So wrapping it up, seatbelt inspections. Don't delay research on every single vehicle every single time. Understand it could require a scan tool to inspect it to make sure it's okay. It could require a visual inspection, may require a test drive or braking conditions, and could include a variety of all three. But Danny, your thoughts on seatbelt inspections? It's a great question. And all three estimating systems have, you know, some kind of language that discuss that, you know, inspection of uh, or diagnostics of the vehicle systems are not included. So part of your repair process is to inspect these seat belts, check the retracting, uh, the the for deployment or locking. You know, you definitely want to uh, take a look at those. You know, not only just for you know just for checking for damage, but also to make sure uh, give the customer a, a reassurance that you're checking out for their best interest. You know, you also want to reference the owner's manuals and show your vehicle owner, oh, yeah. the, the customer, that these are these are required inspections and sometimes may even require replacement. And this is all language that you that you can uh, most likely find in the owner's manual, which is the document that the vehicle uh, uh, is you know came with and is sold with. So it's not like you're you know you're getting an opinion or just uh, anything like that. It's straight from the manufacturer. It's, it's typically in the glove box. Yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't checked it out yet, uh, Danny and I actually did a quick tip on utilizing the owner's manual. I would encourage you to check that out. But more importantly, also if you check out the degweb.org website, there's actually a link or a resource where you can actually download links and view any vehicle owner's manual. So again, reviewing that with the vehicle owner will help you to educate them on why they need to have their seat belts inspected, and in some cases, even replaced. So listen, seat belts, inspections, very, very important. Remember, those vehicle owners are trusting us to repair their vehicle properly so they and their family members or friends will be able to stay safe should they ever in a future collision. So don't delay, check those seat belts today. Thanks for joining us.